Beloved family, do you know what I want you should do? I want you should watch a series of interviews I had with you. You're never even going to guess who it is. It's Michael Voris. Excuse the expression. I'm here with Michael Voris because I have such appreciation for a man who speaks the truth and is not afraid and loves our Lord as he does. So it's churchmilitant.com. And if you don't watch, I'm going to hit you with our rulers. But we're making our new rulers out of sponge. So you're going to be okay. But watch. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. A few years back, I had the chance to meet with Bishop Robert Finn of Kansas City in his office. I was meeting with a number of bishops back then and just asking them general questions about the state of the church in America and so forth. Each of them was very forthcoming. Bishop Finn said to me directly that he wished his brother bishops would stop granting interviews to the National Catholic Reporter, which was essentially a few steps away from his offices. The National Catholic Reporter is a newspaper that for years has backed dissent of all kinds and had entertained columns from such near heretics and dissidents like Father Richard McBrien, Sister Joan Chittister, Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, etc. It got so bad, even very early on, that the Bishop of Kansas City back in the 1960s ordered them to take Catholic out of their name because of the dissent they were fomenting. The paper simply told the bishop to drop dead and went on doing their thing. So think about this for a minute. There is a theological rag whose local bishop condemned it almost 50 years ago that keeps passing itself off as Catholic that routinely publishes heavily slanted stories against the faith, prints editorials that bear almost no resemblance to Catholicism, and gives a platform for dozens of anti-Catholic Catholics to spew out whatever they want. Well, it's a free country, right? Well, sure, but it ain't a free church. Bishop Finn's point and bishops before him was, as long as brother bishops keep granting interviews to this dissident outfit, it will continue to maintain an air of respectability. No one is denying the right of a group of people to get together and produce a publication and say whatever they want. What has many people upset is that they get to do it under the title of being Catholic, when they are in fact not. There is not a spectrum of opinion on which a person may fall who is a practicing Catholic. There is no such thing as a conservative Catholic or a liberal Catholic. There is only Catholic, and that means, as is required of adult converts coming into the faith to openly declare, I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Clearly, the editorial board at the NCR does not believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God because they dissent, object, and disown something of the teaching practically every day. So, why would bishops, big-name bishops, be so anxious to line up and grant interviews to a group like that? And we aren't talking about little obscure bishops in little obscure dioceses. Luminaries like Archbishop Charles Chaput of Philadelphia, the man who has rightfully gone on and on about the loss of Catholic identity, grants interviews to this outfit, which has been a major source of the loss of Catholic identity. Same with Cardinal Dolan of New York, current USCCB President Archbishop Kurtz, Boston Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Cardinal Donald Wuerl, Archbishop Blaise Supich, no real surprise with the last three names, these shepherds may as well grant interviews to Playboy because there isn't really that much of a difference between the editorial opinions of the two publications. Why would shepherds of our blessed Lord give interviews to an outfit that has been publicly condemned by a brother bishop? Why would they grant interviews to an outfit that undermines church teaching while claiming to support it? Do they not see how this adds to more confusion in the minds of the faithful? Many bishops wouldn't in a million years grant an interview to Church Militant or Lepanto Institute because they like to publicly claim that we are divisive. But they'll bend over backwards to grant an interview to a condemned, remember that, condemned by a brother bishop rag just to be seen as, just to be seen as being in the school of cool. So we'd like to draw your attention to an online petition that we have created, Church Militant and Lepanto Institute, to ask the USCCB in part with the greatest urgency, independently and together with your brother bishops of these United States to formally condemn the National Catholic Reporter, 
refusing it credentialed access to Catholic events, and refusing all communication with the clergy on all levels, closed quote. Now, that doesn't seem too bad, does it? Simply voice your collective condemnation of a paper that on the one hand pretends to offer alternative Catholic teaching, while at the same time undermining the truth of the faith. Stop giving them interviews. Forbid your clergy from giving them interviews. Ignore them. It's what you did with us here at Church Militant. It's how you treat Lepanto. Heck, we were unjustly asked to drop the word Catholic from our former name, and we did. And still, we're on your blacklist, and everyone knows why. So, why the double dealing and the double standard? Dissidents disobey, and they get interviews and credentials. Faithful obey, and they get blacklisted. It's surprising that many of the bishops have failed to grasp the essential issue that many of the faithful just don't trust them. They are seen as controlling, manipulative, political bureaucrats, always angling for the best political outcome. Many faithful think they don't have any real concern for the faithful and lack any sense of fairness or justice, unless, of course, a lawsuit threatens losses and exposure. So here's a very simple and easy way to allay some of those thoughts. You watching at home, please click on the link and sign your name to the petition. If you're looking for ways to resist, this is a pretty easy one. The confusion in the church must be brought to an end. And one way that is going to be done is by bringing to an end those who cause the confusion. God love you. I'm Michael Vorce.